This story is about Paul and Susie Wirth. It's a classic love story, or at least it starts out that way. This, this is my sweet right here. This is Paul. <laughs> this is me. He's handsomest man in the world. Boy meets girl, girl meets boy. They fall in love, they get married, they have a family, and then life happens. Hi, Paul, I love you. <laughs> when I first met Paul, I was a little attracted to him because he's giving me a little bit of attention. She had really long hair then, like really long, kind of 80s permed hair. It was hot. Love you, Paul. So we were in this private college where you weren't allowed to kiss. Like, you weren't even allowed to hold hands. But I didn't care, because I was going to kiss her anyway. Felt like we wanted to spend the rest of our lives together. But there was one glitch in my heart. I felt God really calling me into some kind of full-time ministry. And Paul was set on the path of drama. It was that semester that I felt God shifting my thinking to, I don't want to be in theater forever. I want to do ministry. It was like God had us planned to be together, and he worked it all out at the right time, so we um, got engaged. I remember on our honeymoon night, I was nervous. I had never had intercourse. I wouldn't come out of the bathroom. <laughs> I was in the bathroom, and I wouldn't come out. And, and I will never forget Susie saying, the Bible says be naked and unashamed. Come on out. Let's go. So far, this sounds like a fairy tale marriage. Paul became a minister. They bought a house. Things were going really well. But everybody knows that fairy tales are just that fairy tales. And life throws us curveballs we're not always able to handle. When Paul and Susie's daughter Ashlyn was born, they knew something wasn't right. Paul found it difficult to cope. I don't remember the neurologist saying that she's mildly mentally retarded, but Paul did. You're never prepared for that. And I think when all hell breaks loose, you look to escape. I could see the storm coming. I could see the flirtation that I was engaging in that was inappropriate. His heart was definitely not turned toward me. I knew something was wrong, didn't know what it was, never dreamed that it was someone else. I said, uh, I blew it. I cheated on you. I was an arrogant, cocky pastor who thought he could do anything. And God said, nice try. Paul confessed his infidelity in front of his congregation. Then he resigned. What do you do when you want to start over? For Paul and Susie, it meant going home. We moved in with my mom and dad. They came down here and lived with us to save six, money. Six months? Six months. It's the two bedroom, one bath house that I grew up in. So there's not a whole lot of room there. In fact, we bought that couch for them. That, that couch is, is one of them, what do you call that couch? Futons. A futon, it makes into a uh, This queen was where size they bed. slept. The Lord spoke to my heart and said, if I can forgive Paul, if I can forgive his hands, his, his feet, every part of him, if I can forgive him, then how can you not forgive him? I preach about the love of Jesus and the forgiveness of Jesus and how that Jesus can forgive anything. But Susie embodied that for me. And she is the greatest woman that I know. So begins the next chapter in their life. And this is where sex comes back in, but not how you might expect. 